The British weather hasn't lost its sense of humour after a forgettable summer, and just as furlough ends and the school term starts, we find ourselves wrapped in the sweltering embrace of a September heat wave. Nonetheless, many of us have already enjoyed a British beach holiday this year, as befits an island nation with 20,000 miles of coastline. But for all we're blessed with hundreds of miles of beaches, there are pinch points. Lockdown has meant that from Bournemouth to Blackpool, Britain's coastal waters are popular as never before. And that creates traffic, not just on the roads leading to the sea, but in the sea itself. And where you get traffic, you get accidents. In the last year, four deaths have been linked to jet skis. Swimmers and these motorbikes of the sea do not always mix well. Last month, for instance, riders were filmed terrorising swimmers in South Wales with children amongst those narrowly missed. In Essex, things have got so bad that police have launched sea patrols to clamp down on what the force describes as, quote, inconsiderate and antisocial behaviour by jet ski users. Drink often plays a part. Well, it seems that the government's seen enough. Jet ski and speedboat users who behave badly will now face up to two years in jail under new rules designed to stop the minority of users whose recklessness taints the rest. The changes will close a legal loophole that allows jet skis and other recreational craft to evade the law that applies to ships under the 1995 Maritime Shipping Act. Well, as for some of your jet ski thoughts on Twitter, the noise bothers some people, especially on inland waters and lakes and locks, as well as the impact on wildlife. One of my Twitter followers, Paul Pittman, said jet skis were equivalent to allowing racing cars into a playground. But others, uh, like Andrew Cochlan, who pointed out that hiring a jet ski had been a recent and unforgettable holiday highlight. Well, clearly the government must strike a balance. Its first instinct must be to ban or regulate only when strictly necessary, whilst also preventing harm, and all while maintaining a sense of perspective. Four deaths involving jet skis is a tragedy, but a fraction of the 350 British motorbike fatalities we see every year. But there's another bigger point I'd like to make this evening. A healthy society shouldn't always rely on the state to regulate behaviour. It's much better and more cheaply done by others, by us. There are other interested parties, or to use that ugly word, stakeholders, here. The first is the vendor, as we've seen with e-scooters. Retailers are not doing enough to ensure that the vehicles they sell are not going to be used illegally. Eventually this will come back and bite them, by the way. Could the businesses which sell, lend and lease jet skis and speedboats do more to weed out the foolhardy? Perhaps they could. The second is the user, him or herself. I admit to having a quixotic belief in the ability of Britons to organise themselves into associations, clubs and nowadays online communities, doing away with or reducing at least the need for state intervention. The great Anglo-Irish Conservative philosopher Edmund Burke famously identified this instinct as one which meant Britain thrived through the work of its little platoons. I thought about Burke's ideas the other day when I looked down a bridleway meant for horses but now made impassable for them by motorcycle trail bikes. It's another example of a country where lockdown is putting different recreational groups in competition for scarce resources, in this case a nice ride in the countryside. The bikes had carved ruts that made it impossible for horses to canter without injuring themselves. The police could intervene, but do we really need to get them involved in this sort of thing? What if the trail bike riders had avoided creating a rut, or if that was impossible, organising for a tractor to roll the ground flat a couple of times a year? The law should be there to stop dangerous behaviour, to stop lunatics on jet skis circling swimmers, e-scooters riding on dual carriageways and motorcycle trail bikes colliding with walkers on footpaths meant only for pedestrians. But there's a lot of antisocial behaviour that stops short of physical harm and where we, not the government, can make a difference. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.